Hi, everybody. It's another Saints podcast for you today. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Of course, I'm your host, Eric Volden, this morning, Director of Admissions at Seward County Community College. We have a very popular program in the studio today and lots of interest, man. Everybody is, uh, because I, I think... Everybody knows how much you can make uh, whenever you come out of this program. I have Corrosion Technology in the studio today. Uh, Mr. Osri and Reed here today. So if you guys just kind of uh, introduce yourselves and, and tell, us, uh, tell us what you do here at the college. Hi, I'm Autry Coleman. I'm the instructor. I've been teaching here at the Seward County Community College for the last four years. And the program has come a long way, and we have some future plans to go even further with this. Yeah. Um, my name is Reed Brazil. Uh, I'm a corrosion student, and I will be finishing my second semester next week here at the corrosion. So there we go. So you're you're finishing up your first year, Reed. Yes, sir. There you go, man. So you you've got a pretty good idea of what uh, what's going all going on in the corrosion program. Yeah. So uh, do you guys just want to kind of tell me? Uh, let, let's start with just kind of some of the the classes, some of the courses that uh, you guys take in that, that you teach in corrosion, Autry, and and um, Reed that you're taking. Uh, what are some of those classes? What is it covering? And first of all, probably just tell us what what corrosion technology is. Corrosion technology is the study of deteriorating materials, not necessarily metals, but mainly metals, but pretty much everything we make today has a end result of going back to where Mother Nature first uh, intended. So <laughs> in saying that, the, the study of metals is very interesting in, because a lot of people don't understand that it is just a natural response to the environment we live in that causes these metals and uh, materials to deteriorate. So yeah, so in one of the courses we teach is we introduce you and give you this information and give you the science behind it because it's a lot of science that takes place in the deterioration of these different materials. Yeah, uh, so Reed, what are some of the courses that, uh, that you're taking right now? What's some of the stuff that you've learned over this last year? Um, well, my cathodic protection class, I'm taking that this semester, internal corrosion, um, metallurgy, them are just a few, and they're just, uh, and we build up rectifiers from from the ground up, and we just we just do studies on pipe and stuff, just what we're doing, going to be doing in a job. Yeah. Yeah, very, very cool. And you can kind of hear uh, just in the background a little bit. I think the welding guys are, are going off next door. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's good because we need those guys too. Yeah. Because we, this industry in, uh, works together with the welders. In fact, those guys uh, pretty much depends uh, – actually, our knowledge depends on what those guys learn and do as they uh, do the attaching and the welding and bonding. And there's a chemical reaction that takes place in their welding that we as corrosion techs have to be uh, aware of. And so when we're out there doing our jobs, we have to make sure they are in, done the welders right because they can create that spot where that corrosion can start. And so we work pretty close together with the welding department. Yeah, very, very cool. I, I think they've got the cutter fired up right now. It kind of feels like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The big one. <laughs> yeah, the big yeah. cutter. The big boy. So, uh, yeah, it, really cool. And, and Autry, I know you and I kind of talk uh, quite a bit about corrosion program, your corrosion program and the classes and everything. And I always tell students that, you know, if you're coming in, you, you need to have, you know, knowledge of electricity. You're going to have to have chemistry. You're going to have to have, like, a little environmental science in there, too, uh, to really get the full effect of this program. That is correct, yeah. Eric, yeah. As, as uh, Reed is learning here, the, you, uh, the math is important, as well as the science and the uh, knowledge of the uh, atomic structure, the elements, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, these play an important role in how you understand the corrosion concept because it doesn't take much for it to start and once it starts it never stops no. in fact uh, the science behind it is we don't stop it and completely stop it we just, just slow it down there you go he's learning slow it down <laughs> <laughs> about all we could do is just slow down the process yeah yeah well yeah, like Autry you said at first you know we're talking about corrosion we're talking about rust and that's just kind of the natural state that everything right. wants to go back to right. yeah right right and so yeah we offer here the, like I said the introduction to corrosion give you uh, the basics of it and how it starts and then we do uh, internal where it's, there's corrosion happening where you can't see 
And the results of that can be very dangerous and hazardous to the public. And that's the reason why we feel this corrosion program is very important to our infrastructure because a lot of the danger you don't see is because yeah. of the corrosion. So internal corrosion is one of my uh, choice subjects in there because of that hidden, unknown, and unseen that could hurt you down the road. Then that's just speaking literally that it can't hurt you. So we teach internal and then we have atmospheric, which is the most uh, costly corrosion there is because you can't fight the air, you <laughs> breathe, right? right yeah. You have yeah. to live in it, you have to live in this environment. So yeah, we teach atmospheric and we also teach the guys estimates and reports because they need to know how to start a project and what it's gonna cost on that project and the materials they're gonna be needing and then they're gonna have to know how to be uh, budget conscious, you know, be able to know how to spend that money up under the guidelines of their companies that they work for. And uh, metallurgy, of course, is one of the classes you have to take. Right. It's required. And, uh, and then the chemistry, yeah. of course, because you <laughs> do need to understand the elements and their reaction to right. one another. Because different kinds of metals kind of corrode at different rates, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. That so, is correct. I mean, uh, aluminum is going to act different than steel. It's going to act different than iron yes. sort of thing. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we were talking about, like, the internal corrosion. So that's like, uh, uh, when you say internal corrosion, Autry, are you, do you mean, like, um, like pipes and underground, yes. the underground piping and things like that? Yes, sir. In, uh, underground pipes, the big storage tanks you see. They have stuff inside. You don't see it corroding. You don't know if it's corroding unless you have had this course where it teaches you how to monitor those structures to see if there's the possibility of a corrosion stale start starting. But I just want to go back to Reed here. He's one of my protégés. <laughs> uh, I'm very proud of him. He works hard. He comes to class. He, he does his due diligence. And he just got offered a job yesterday. Oh, so really? Congratulations, Reed. And appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, Reed, Reed, here in just a sec, man, you're going to have to tell us all about that. But real quick, um, uh, corrosion techs have no problems finding jobs. So that's something to keep in mind there. Yeah. So, Reed, tell us about uh, tell us about your offer, man, if you don't mind. Uh, well, I applied a month back and just as a intern, you know, I, was, I didn't know really what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go and stuff like that. And so I. It was, man, I'm not a patient person, and when you apply for jobs, and you got you got to be patient. And so, yesterday I finally got a call and and got interviewed for it. And uh, you know, it didn't take long for them to hire me. <laughs> so I mean, I must have said something to them that was that was good enough for them to hire me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, very very cool, man. So I mean, it's it wasn't like crazy difficult getting a no. job. Yeah, no. And, and you haven't even graduated yet. No, no, yeah. sir. <laughs> I still got a semester left. Yeah, in I still got to take two more, two more classes. I think I'm going to take them over the summer too and finish them up while I can. So very, very cool. So um, on that, I guess uh, Autry, how long does uh, uh, the degrees and certifications take in, in cathodic protection and corrosion tech? How long does a, a normal student coming in, no credits, no nothing? How long does it take them? It usually takes, depending on which. Uh, certification or the associate's uh, applied science degree depends on which one he is uh, or her is attempting to uh, accomplish or receive uh, the certification is a, cl a certified B and it's on three semesters you take all the uh, required classes the first semester and second semester and then we ask you to do a little bit of electives like the basic uh, uh, public speaking uh, English and math and then the AAS is a little bit more, uh, we ask a little bit more of the electives. We need you to do the chemistry part, we need you to do the atmospheric part, and you have to do the in-depth studies a little bit more. And we, in those, those courses that I teach, the atmospheric part, you're gonna do a little research because you need to understand that this is a process that is going on constantly and there's always new methods, new ideas, new ways to work with and help with the problem of corrosion. Right. So, and uh, that's kind of one thing we talked about. Uh, we, you know, with the ag guys, we had uh, uh, Jared and, and Andrew in here, uh, the welding guys, a few days ago, and they say you're coming in for industrial technology, sure, 
But you also need to make sure that you know how to communicate. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, communicate with your with your bosses. Communicate with your clients. So that English piece, that public speaking piece, the, the communications piece is really imperative to a lot of these programs. Yes, and I'm pushing writing for more too because these guys have to do reports that has to be legible because you have these other entities that you have to answer to. Yeah, DOT, the OSHA, FEMSA, uh, yeah, you're in the federal uh, regulations uh, department. Of, yeah, these guys will come in and they want to see your paperwork because the work they do out there is very cri critical. And like I mm -hmm. say, some of it is very hazardous. Yeah. Uh, so um, one thing, uh, Reed, you were talking about, uh, it's to probably taking some classes over the summer, finishing some, some stuff off. So are you going to be on campus or are you going to be doing some of that online? Uh, I think the two classes are online, so I'll be doing those while while I'm working. So that'll be that'll be a good deal for me. Yeah, for sure. So Autry, I know that uh, we have been really trying to move the corrosion technology program online. We've got some of the classes on there. About how, how close are we to having that? Uh, I'd say we're about sixty-five to seventy-five percent online awesome. right now awesome. as we speak. I think we're we're missing maybe two classes, two or three. And uh, they're in they're in process. I mean, I got one halfway done, and another one is three quarters of the way done. So we're we're real close, Eric. Yeah, and I, I know we've been working on that. And I, I know we've had uh, just kind of adding a few more courses every yes. semester, yes. and then yeah, uh, eventually the corrosion tech program going to be a hundred percent online. They can yes. do it all online. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that'd be a that'd be a good opportunity for people to all over the world. You know, you can do it any state you want to. Yeah, and like you said. Um, all them older guys wanting to come back to college and get, yeah, their, yeah. get their degree and stuff, and this gives them an opportunity for them to yeah, do that. You just spoke on something I was going to get to. It's, it's very <laughs> yeah. unusual, but it is happening. Today's world, uh, have guys been out in the field 30 years, 40 years, and they can't move up because they don't have a degree in corrosion. They have degrees in all the other fields that they've chosen through, the, through their lives, but now that they're ready for the supervisor's job, that job requires a degree in corrosion. So uh, it's funny that a couple of my advisory board members have got to come to take my class, <laughs> which being online makes it so much accessible for them. And that's right. the great thing that we're doing yeah. here at Community Colleges at Seward County is putting it online so that these guys can continue to further their careers out there in the field. Yeah, and we are, and on that, um, we are one of the only corrosion programs in the whole United States. I think there's, what, like five or six in the whole U.S.? It's, it's, it's only three, Eric. Oh, it's oh, only wow. three. And, uh, less and, than I thought, yeah. And we're working together with them. Uh, we have uh, Dawson out in Montana, and we have Kilgore down in Texas, and they're both really good schools. And I know those uh, instructors over in Kilgore are some awesome people to work with. They're very professional, and they have been very supportive in this effort to help us with going online. Very. So, so do, you, do you get together with those guys? Because I know we, we host the NACE conferences, yes. you know, yes. like uh, every year, like at least once or twice a year, right? Because of COVID, we've only been able to do it once. Yeah. And so this year, we're going to try, they're going to try to do it twice again. So they're coming in June, so we have it scheduled to be here next month. Cool. So, yeah. Cool. So tell me a little bit about NACE, because that's kind of your, the, like, the, the corrosion group, like a national corrosion It's group? the National Association of Corrosion Engineers. These are the guys that's been doing it the longest, and they're some of the top guys in the field. Very professional, very knowledgeable of corrosion. There is so many different types of corrosion. There's so many ways that you can monitor and protect and prolong corrosion on the different materials out there. Because when you think about a building, uh, you never think about the I-beams or even the, the side rails right. that are made of metal. Even mm -hmm. concrete is enforced, reinforced with rebar. Yeah. As one of the sciences is that it's not so much when you see the erosion of the concrete, it's usually because the rebar inside has already started corroding and once it corrodes then the aggregates and the different things in the cement react so you have that chemical reaction which is why you have to understand a little bit more about chemistry than other courses yeah. out here yeah so that is one of those things that the national science foundation has uh, given us a, a go ahead on learning about it and studying it and also preparing for the challenge because when you see those bridges collapse yeah. Yeah. That's what's happening. 
Yeah, Those. and uh, that brings us to kind of our next point here, uh, about Mr. Coleman, about uh, some of the future of corrosion technology and, and where this is headed. Uh, because, you know, we've had, uh, you know, like you said, bridges collapsing. We've got all this infrastructure. We've got water pipes, you yes, know, you know yes, the water, yes. you know, water and sewer pipes going through uh, yes. underground. We've got bridges. We've got roads. We've got buildings that are all falling down. And the U.S. is currently investing billions of dollars in yes. infrastructure. Yeah. Yes. So this, uh, the corrosion technology program is going to just explode here uh, very soon, I'm, 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 I'm betting. Yes. And also, Eric, as you mentioned, it's going to explode too again because of uh, pipelines. Uh, they have a mega rule coming down, and they're in phase two right now with the mega rule, and which means for the pipeline companies that when that third phase come in, they're going to have to have corrosion techs out there monitoring those lines right now that they have for the last 50, 60 years not had to have any kind of cathodic protection which is another course we teach out here, which provides uh, a monitoring system to carefully watch your pipes to make sure that they're not corroding on the inside and keep this country safe. Yeah. Even though smaller pressure, the PSI on most of those lines are in the thousands. But so far for the last 40 years, I, I was trying to uh, make this kind of so everybody can understand. For the last 50, 60 years, uh, if it's under 60 PSI, they don't have to have cathodic protection. Well, an explosion happened about a couple of years out in California yeah. where that line was only 50 pounds per press. So now they want every line that carries any kind of hazardous material, no matter what the <laughs> PSI <laughs> is. And I think the minimum that they're going to allow them to have is like three pounds per square inch, which is not a lot. Oh man! But the, and it took an accident. To it took that. yeah, it yeah, took an accident to get them to do the thing that they needed to have right. done years ago. Yeah. So with that said, Eric, uh, I can see the course getting busier with more students coming in because that is the future, especially if it's online. Yeah, yes. especially online. Yes, and I'm more interested in uh, since I've been in this teaching this course, I've gotten more interested in the future of our country. Uh, I'm in it now for the long haul because I see this as being one of the most important parts of providing a, uh, a preserving, excuse me, our communities, our, our schools, our streets, our bridges, our country. Yeah. You know, I mean, the corrosion is in our Navy ships, mm -hmm. in our airplanes, on our railroads. I mean, these are the things that keeps our system working. And so we have to take good care of it. So yeah. my job now as a corrosion instructor is to be a good steward. With yeah. my knowledge and what I know that can help provide some security. So we're, we're, we're keeping bridges from falling down. We're, yes. keeping, we're keeping clean water supplies. Yes. We're keeping, yes. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Yes. That's, that's awesome, Audrey. Yes. So, um, and Reed, we kind of talked about this just a little bit, but uh, so your after work and after college, uh, after graduation opportunities, uh, what are those like? Because I know uh, we've had a lot of students graduate from those programs, come out just making some decent money yeah. right off the bat. Oh, I don't know. There's a lot of opportunities out there for, especially in this program. Um, you know, Coleman and Arturo, the other instructor, and they, they've they helped us out a lot, gave us a lot of contacts and, you know, helped us with our resumes. If we needed any help, helped us do that. It's It's not like they're helping us just with our classes and trying to get out of here. They're kind of invested in us, you know help us yeah help us with a lot of life stuff that we need to get started so right that's on, good man. yeah it's one thing we definitely uh, kind of pride ourselves on here as a uh, uh, job placement after graduation mm -hmm. it's something, something we we really try to help you know every student achieve um yeah. so uh Andre, what do, what are some of the the corrosion fields some of the after after college opportunities that you that you see all the time well i have been working with a few guys out in the contractors sector of corrosion and those guys uh have started out at a gas plant like R reed is going and they've seen the need to get out into the different areas of the corrosion field because you have guys that do like coatings and all they do is apply coatings to the different structures to keep the keep the, the structures from uh, de de deteriorating excuse me right but I was just going to say, coatings is the first line of defense against corrosion. So 
there's mm-hmm. another job in itself that's separate from just doing corrosion. Pro, yeah, but it's just yeah. applying something that does help stop or prevent or prolong corrosion in the long run. So the contractor sector is very big. I mean, a lot of guys can't afford to uh, work for a company because of insurance or whatever their personal problems are. But right. they've learned that they can do it on this as a as the owner of this so-called or not so-called but owner of this specific service and they do a good job so that's one sector and that's that's totally separate than the gas line sector where that's the big industry uh partners we have like dcp northern natural uh energy transfer williams field service and yeah. it, you just can just name, name them. them it's just <laughs> it's tons of and then we have other uh contractors that i, I really want to say this because it's important too, because they put in what's called anode beds, and those guys are very, very uh, important to the corrosion field. Yeah. And so there's a lot of those guys, and we send our, we try to get our students to go out there to get that practice or get that experience, uh, experience from these guys, because they've been out there quite a few years yeah. too. Yeah. And so the industry is just really vast. And as I learned today, there's even more outside of just the, uh, uh, Excuse me, coatings and the uh, anode bed installers. Yeah, yeah. Very there's guys that do the water wells. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> right. And there's guys that do the sewer sewer lines. Yeah, sewer lines. Yeah. yeah. It's corrosion all over the place. It's just, yeah. It's, there's it's, it's, there's jobs out there all <laughs> all over. Yeah, all over. So, uh, kind of, uh, uh, would you want to toss out a salary range? Do you feel comfortable tossing out a salary range? Uh, probably around what do you say, fifty to. 150k depends on who you get started with i've had one young man that's only 21 years old right uh-huh. now and he's making six figures yeah and he's been in the field for three years yeah then i have six of them that are ranging from 70 to 90 70 to 90 grand a year yeah and uh it's it's just it's the possibilities are endless out there yeah i mean there's, they, they value what these guys do. The companies value what they do for them. Yeah, hey, excellent, excellent. So, uh, guys, I think we're getting ready to kind of wrap some stuff up here. Is there anything that we need to touch on that we haven't quite hit yet? Females. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because of their ability to do what a lot of people think, and I, I, I'm kind of in between there. I, my wife tells me that's old-fashioned thinking, <laughs> and my daughters definitely tell me it's old-fashioned thinking, but I was always under the experience because my mother, to me, was awesome, and I didn't think anyone could do as much as she did. But women can multitask, which when you think about corrosion and all the monitoring you do and all the different things you have to keep in line and uh, have them in their priorities, Women are better at it than men. <laughs> just, just point blank. Women, you're better at it than just we in, are. Just in general. And, and there's yeah. a big demand for you. Yeah. And, and I know my, one of my good friends that's in the field, her name is, uh, she's going to kill me, sorry. <laughs> Maribel, Maribel, she is awesome. She is one of the best techs out there. I mean, yeah. they, they, she, she's not been without a job since she's gotten into the field. Yeah. And, and I'll bet she's making some big bucks right oh, now. Oh, she's so. got a couple of brand new pickups yeah. and a nice apartment. <laughs> she lives down in Houston. Hi, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, very, very cool. Yeah. All right, guys. Is, is there anything else before we get ready to wrap up here? Mm-mm. No, no, no. no, thanks, Eric, for have. having us on. Yeah, yeah thanks, uh, Mr. Coleman. Thanks, Reed, for coming in today. Man, uh, corrosion technology. So if you have any questions, need any more information on corrosion technology, I'll put the admissions contact information up here in just a second. Give us a call. We'll put you in touch with Mr. Coleman. Corrosion technology, hey, it is the wave of the future, and we'd love to have you in that program. Other than that, we'll see you next time.